fascinating, isn't it? Because it seems like from what you've just said that um, it's kind of, there's two things I want to come to about what you've mm -hmm. said. First of all, um, it's about the right PV, like mm -hmm. it's about the right vitis vinifera. It's about getting the right choice in. And that might mm -hmm. be a human choice. It might be what you like. So you mentioned mm -hmm. your Cabernet Cortis, um, you know, had that green pepper element, uh, something that you mm -hmm. learned in, you don't kind of like in Bordeaux. Uh, and and I, I get that as well in a lot of Cabernet Cortis. Um, certainly, it's an interesting variety because Cabernet Cortis looks like Malbec or Shiraz. It's mm -hmm. dark, mm -hmm. it's inky. Mm -hmm but then it can have this kind of astringent, powerful mm -hmm. green tannin, can't it? And it's, I think it's about working with that correct. It's a very new grape variety, mm -hmm. Cabernet Cortis, mm -hmm. but perhaps blending it with other varieties, maybe some Rondo, Regent, you know, mm -hmm. to make it a, a bit softer, because um, we don't have the data about how mm -hmm. well Cabernet Cortis can age. You know, we don't have 20, 30 mm -hmm. years behind it. Um, and I love the fact that you're talking about souvenir gris so importantly, mm -hmm. because for me, my experience, so I brought in mm -hmm. souvenir gris last year. It was the only, well, one of only two grapes I've managed mm -hmm. to bring in with a 1500 millimeters of rain. Yes. In, wow. in, in the Southeast of England compared to an average of about yeah. 800. Mm -hmm. So, and I like the way you mentioned, it's just a brilliant grape variety for its resistance. Mm -hmm. and I've, I've mentioned this before, it's kind of bulletproof, isn't it? It's really mm -hmm. thick yeah, skin, yeah, yeah. protected against yeah, yeah. wind, protected against um, lots of animals and, and mm -hmm. pests. And then of course has really good resistance. Uh, the second thing I wanna mention, Camille, is what you mentioned about the fact that, yes, we want Vitis vinifera, people are still interested in it, but I wanna ask about Poland and about how the market is accepting sustainability at the minute, mm -hmm. because of course in Poland, like in Denmark, in Sweden, mm -hmm. in England, Vitis vinifera, is it, if it is grown uh, in some of those more than others, mm -hmm. you may need to spray more, you may need to protect mm -hmm. more, but of course with things like Souvenir Gris, with uh, Regent, depending on the site, but generally has lower spraying regimes, there's mm -hmm. more sustainability in poland is it important for a wine to be sustainable do the consumers want that mm -hmm. is that something you're maybe going to think about the future um are you going to probably adopt more pvs because of the high mm -hmm. proportion of sustainability uh so two questions so yeah. uh, coming back to the first question uh i really have some ideas how to work with red varieties red uh, peewees and what i taste in poland as the best uh, examples of for example regent cabernet cortis rondo and i think that the clue is to not over maturated it Mm. And the best examples of Regent, of Cabernet Cortis I had was or short maceration, like five, six days and then pressing and the end of, of, uh, of fermentation without skins. Mm. Or, for example, my, uh, good, a good friend of mine uh, do like a semi-carbonic Mm. Uh, maceration of regent and the wine is wonderful it's really like a burgundy character of regent yeah. what is maybe quite funny uh, but he tried to uh, he tried to um, the stem the whole berries uh, and then to start a fermentation with a whole berries like intracellular yeah. fermentation yeah yeah, yeah. As much as so possible, whole, whole berries think. mixed with some crushed juice like combined yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. without stems because it could yeah. bring some greenness but yeah. Yeah. but like 50 60 percent of whole berries it, it it depends on how you set the destama and then fermentation with whole 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 berries like intracellular fermentation and the character of wine is more like maybe Beaujolais driven but yeah. I mean the good Beaujolais like Beaujolais crew <laughs> uh, and, 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 and the wines are so much more elegant and so much nice and and the other thing what I uh, what I experience uh, at Polish market because I tried like 10 years old Regent uh, 
I yep. really see that the time, even with more maturated, uh, for example, oh, yeah. regent, yeah. the time is really important. Like, like, like in the past with 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 uh, no no buy. Um, um yeah uh, a little bit warmer with this vinifera variety mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so after six eight ten years regan sometimes even with those you know girls mean uh, um yeah girls mean notes of of with those vegetable notes it drops uh, it goes out with with the time yeah. so yeah. so uh, the first uh, the first question I, I i think that i really see that 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 tendency and if i would work still with regent with red varieties i would go that way but coming back to the uh, second question the second question was more about uh, sustainability in poland yeah, uh, sorry sorry <clears throat> So yeah, of course, in Poland it is so much important, uh, and we have quite high percentage of organic vineyards uh, because we have only nine hundred uh, hectares of, of 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 vineyards, and all the projects are quite new, mm -hmm. and mainly I uh, mainly uh, those projects are around. Uh, are run by the people from the cities, from different backgrounds. So for our, most of our community is really focused on sustain, sustainability and uh, organic farming. And coming back to your question, it depends because in my place, when, when we have only 500, 600, uh, millimeters of rainfall, it is possible to have Vitis vinifera with uh, with uh, with uh, with organic farming. Right. But it's, it, <clears throat> it is a really a special place. So we are close to the river, we have a lot of wind, and it's a perfect place. But in most of more places, more continental places, more places, you know, far from the river, um with with more fertile soils i think it will be really hard to to work um uh, uh, organic with vitis vinifera uh, so then you need to spray with a with a with a more um, powerful and more toxic uh, um, products and maybe then it is better to use more resistant grape to avoid using using you know more toxic um more toxic um uh, more toxic products but also the the the, the true is that uh, me uh, working with uh, vitis vinifera uh, organically we need to spray quite a lot like in austria for example yeah. So when I talk to my friends from Austria, to winemakers, they spray sometimes 10, 12, even sometimes 14 times mm -hmm. per year. Mm -hmm. And it is my, my experience at my place. So we need to yeah. spray quite often uh, because, of the, because of the products, because of the sulfur, copper, mm -hmm. and etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but with, for example, Sauvignon Gris, I know the guys who spray only twice a year, and my the, the good friend of mine who mainly work with uh, hybrids, he spray five six times per year yeah. normally. So it's a big difference, uh, and also I would say that not every piwi is so resistant comparing to the other. Like for yeah. example, Solaris and Johanniter are not so resistant. What mm -hmm. I heard. If Solaris, you you we are quite safe because we can pick it up quite early. But Johanita is quite late, and for most of the winemakers I talked, uh, for them it is similar variety to Vitis vinifera um, regarding regarding spraying regime. And so it really depends. But of course, with Muscaris, with Souvenir Gris. It is so resistant and, and yeah, and it is because in Austria, in, in Italy, in, in France, they are 
hunting those varieties mm. uh, to to work more uh, more 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 even more sustainability uh, than let's say standard organic way so camille that's quite interesting uh, i've got two points again to make mm -hmm. <clears throat> on your last point, um, bringing your example there on Solaris and then Johannita, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> really then, because of the, um, well, those two um, not being as resistant, or not being as resistant as, as others, mm -hmm. uh, like Souvenir Gris, but Solaris, you can manage to work around that because you pick early, mm -hmm. but yeah, Johannita. Yeah. You, you you don't so that's a fascinating decision to make then in terms of what you establish in your vineyard right so when when you have all of your vineyard established um uh, all the people coming in your agronomists your viticulturalists mm -hmm. talking to you it's interesting that someone will still go for johanita because it's obviously going to struggle more in the later part of the season potentially mm -hmm. from from rocks and so on. Um, so that, I find that fascinating because you do see quite a bit of Johannita in Poland. And of course you see much more Solaris. Solaris is the most popular mm -hmm. variety. So that's interesting. So why do you think then certain grape growers and by extension winemakers mm -hmm. are utilizing Johannita over Solaris? Why? Why do you think, and I know this is a difficult because you're thinking about somebody else, but mm -hmm. why do you think a grape grower will put Johannita mm -hmm. in the ground rather than Solaris because there's higher risk uh, mm -hmm. in Poland? So why do you think? Why do you think that's the case? Uh, so, you know, sometimes it is hard to answer your question because everybody has their own experience and, mm -hmm. and sometimes it is more that, you know, I, I think that some some decisions are made with uh, some decisions are made without any without without big thinking before the plantings and okay. I'm not really sure that all the people uh, do it really um, uh, with with a big awareness and also I think that you know like in our lot of nurseries local nurseries we have still a lot of hybrids so. A lot of advisors advise those varieties to plant, and it it it, it, it is a part of Polish winemaking, especially of mm. the beginning. And right now, uh, I think if you think more about it, um, and you really start to read about it, you 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 can really think that maybe Pinot Blanc of Gewürztraminer, it is even earlier than Johanniter, and as 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 and the same and has the same resistance. So mm. so then you need to make decision. What do you prefer? What style of wine you prefer? Mm. Mm. And with Johanniter, mm, for example, I see that in my region it is quite popular. So, so a lot of my friends has Johanniter, uh, have Johanniter, and uh, for example, one of them produce a magnificent uh, orange wine, Johanniter mm -hmm. Ultra. And yep. Johanniter, to me, it is also a really plastic variety. So you can have some sparkling, you can have a great white, dry mineral wine when it's grown on limestone you can have more easy wine with some residual sugar and you can have orange wine so yeah. your hangiter is a quite great variety because it gives you a lot of opportunity 